Warning, this case contains content surrounding topics such as child abuse, rape, sexual assault, murder, torture, and CP. Your discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to the Night Parade Podcast, where we shine light on the dark. Each episode, we present to you a case on all things true crime and paranormal. We'll be hosts for this evening. My name is Glenn. And my name is Jan. And we work together here with the team at Night Parade Studio to bring you the show. Hey guys, if you really want to help support our channel, you can do so by subscribing to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. And, and if you're listening to us from one of these already, you can, you can still help us by subscribing to us on, on YouTube. It really helps us out. And also, if there's any cases that you guys are interested in having us cover, you can feel free to drop it down in the comments below, you know, because we really want to know. Yeah, yeah. And who knows? Maybe we'll cover one of those cases that you guys suggested. Yeah. All right. And for you that are listening for the first time or watching for the first time, first off, welcome to the Night Parade. That's right. This is our final case in our series of evil killers. This guy has taken unspeakable things to a whole nother Ooh. level. And he is now considered to be one of the or the world's worst pedophile. Yep. Like, like the worst. Not one of... He's the worst. He's the worst. He operated on the dark web, which is a deeper level of the internet, which can't be accessed by your average web browsers like Google, Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox. Yeah. And he was the mastermind of an international pedophile ring. Oof. Oh my goodness. So this is the case of Peter Scully. Let's get started. Let's do it. Whew. All right. So right. this case, Jan, is, is a true case of malice towards the innocent. It's a human being. A child was brutally tortured and assaulted and killed. This was all recorded and produced into what, was, what would be the infamous video called Daisy's Destruction. And for a long time, Daisy's destruction was only rumored to exist. Like, you know, it was just some kind of legend. Mm. Something that could only be found in the deepest parts of the dark web. Okay, wait, Glenn. Before we go further into this, let's explain a little bit of what the people would expect what the dark web is. Uh, yeah, that's a good point, Jan. Yeah. So the dark web, well, the internet, if you can imagine it, is like a, a, an iceberg, right? So on, on the surface, we have the surface web. So that consists of like Facebook, Google, Yahoo, you know, the, the websites that you, that you access every day. Yeah, daily basis, yeah. Yeah, so the next level is the deep web. And so that's going to be like legal documents, you know, government records, academic records, stuff like that. N normal people can't access yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah. And so the next level is the dark web. And so that, it, it's, it can be accessed by normal web browsers, like we said, right? Right. And so you have to use a special browser with, like, encrypted software, mm -hmm. um, something, like, uh, something like Tor. On the dark web, people are able to access illegal marketplaces. You know, this is where a lot of illegal activity happens. Yeah. Um, it's said that you can buy drugs, you can buy hitmen, you can buy human organs, oh you can, even human trafficking. Y you could buy humans. Yeah. And this, oh my god, that's the worst thing ever. Yeah, you don't have to get the whole human, you can get, the, you get some Just organs. Just parts of them? Yeah. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a bad story. Yeah. <laughs> we know that predators love the dark web because most are able to access every, everything untraceably. They do this by hiding behind encrypted software. So there's these special websites, right? Yeah. Where uh, predators, they trade child pornography. <laughs> Fuck. It's sick. The sickest part is that to be one of uh, to be a part of one of these communities, yeah. you also have to contribute your own content. So you, you can't just be a bystander there and just watching whatever is going on. Nah, you have to have something of yours that's going on mm -hmm. that they could watch as well. Yeah. What the hell? This ensures that nobody entering that their little club is mm. a police officer. Uh, you know, because there's no way a police officer would do that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Unless you're that type of officer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, members of this sick group would challenge each other to post even more lewd and disgusting content. There, there's different genres of this type of pornography. The worst, it was called hurtcore. What is what is hurtcore? Hurtcore is a genre of child pornography in which the, an adult inflicts serious pain or sexual torture on a child, or a child is forced to do it to another. That's sick, bro. What the? F yeah, it's so disgusting. Oh my god. Yeah. Sometimes victims would be forced to eat dog food or even human feces. That's nasty. Yeah. <laughs> what the, who would do that to somebody? 
That's that's torture. Yeah, that's torture. Sometimes the victims would be forced to pose holding up handwritten signs containing racial slurs, mm-hmm. and, and these signs would sometimes be tagged with like a username, calling that user out. It's similar to tagging on like Facebook or Instagram, like like shouting them out or something like that. Exactly. Like, oh my so, sometimes it gives credit to the original poster. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah. And, and viewers would watch these videos, you know, just to watch an innocent innocent child brutally tortured. Oh gosh. And sometimes it would turn into a snuff film. What what is a snuff film? Okay, so if you don't know what a snuff film is, it's basically just a video of somebody killing someone else. It's murder. So what is this like a live stream of of the, of someone murdering somebody else? Yes. That's yeah. that's what that is. Yeah. And people watch this. People watch this stuff. What the it's it's crazy to even think about. It's like this is real life. Yeah, it's not just some yeah. sick. I thought that would be like um, I thought I thought it's almost like just in the movies, right? right. <laughs> what the fuck? And Daisy's destruction. It was considered to be the worst of the worst. Yeah, and nobody you know wants to be specific about any details about the, the video because admitting to watching it would be admitting to a serious crime. Yeah. What we do know is that it was a four-part se- video series, each video about 10 to 15 minutes long, mm. and we also know that users paid $10,000 to watch it. What? Yeah. But that's a lot of money for you to be spending on uh, child pornography or molesting a child or torturing a child. Why would you pay that much money to see a child get abused over and over and over again that's that's truly evil that's fucking sick like i don't it's uh, crazy how it's like valued this high yeah yeah ten thousand dollars to watch like Uh, what is what is going on in your head that's a lot of money insane that's a lot of money it is it is oh my goodness and rumors about daisy's destruction were uh were happening even on the surface web Mm. People in forums were saying that the series disp- depicts like several babies being mm-hmm. tortured to death. Oh shoot! Supposedly, two babies were treated like pillows in a pillow fight. Oh. The adults in the scene kept swinging until the babies were deceased. Mm-hmm. Another baby might have been disemboweled, mm-hmm. and apparently, a young girl w- who was featured in the series had her limbs chopped off after being defecated on. Oh my goodness. Oh, man. Even hardened members of the hardcore community thought that the series was taking things too far. Okay, pause. So these evil people are saying that this is going too far. Yeah, the people, the uh, I would say like the most evil people in the world. Come, on, come on, dude! Like you're yeah. watching this, and they're seeing this, and they're saying how nasty and disturbing this is, and that that only shows you how much like that video really you know really is nasty like how nasty that video is yeah because these evil people are like nah mm-mm. yeah i don't even do that yeah yeah so now we have to talk about no limits fun mm-hmm. nlf um it was an illegal website on the dark web that featured daisy's destruction apparently it had a premium price where users could watch live torture sessions with the children what the hell we know that whoever owned and operated NLF was making a lot of money. Mm. Investigators were surprised when they linked the video to an Australian man named Peter Scully. And little will we know that Peter would be known as the world's worst pedophile. The worst. But before we tell you any more, let us continue with his backstory. That's right. He was born in Melbourne, Australia on January 13th, 1963. His childhood was pretty uneventful. He seemed to live a pretty normal life like everyone else. He worked in real estate and seemed to be very successful with it. In his late 40s, he was living in a small suburb with his wife and two children. His colleagues said that he was wealthy, smart, and well-liked by a lot of people, apparently. Wow. So in 2009, the Australian Securities and Investment Commission linked him to 117 cases of fraud and deception relating to real estate crimes. Mm. He's not looking like he's smart at all. Mm. It looks like he's just scamming people. Yeah. And 2.68 million of the money he scammed from is 
from the real estate investors.、Mm-hmm. They were ready to charge him in 2012, but the problem is he fled to Australia back in 2011 before he was convicted. Oh,、wow. so that kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Later, it was found out that he had been running an illegal escort service in Australia. He was selling a Malaysian t- teenager to suburban sex parties. Disgusting. He sometimes left her with the clients for days at a time. It's not even just an overnight work. This is almost like renting you, like、Gosh. a van rental. So he was already doing this stuff before he left Australia. Yeah, yeah. He also ran website advertising. Her, just her. It's just a website for her, as if she's the only vehicle that's available in the parking lot.、And、wow, he even ran a website. Yeah, yeah, which is a long. He would go along such ways just to get her out there. Yeah, and her name was Ling, and Scully referred to her as his girlfriend. Scully had reportedly gotten angry at her one. One time, one night, and locked her outside of the house that they were staying in, completely naked. Which I don't know about you. If you are locked out in the house, you want to be clothed, especially at night. Yeah. Because at night it's just it's really cold. <laughs> that's messed up. Yeah,、so、and that's to your girlfriend. Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> oh my god, I would have been out of there if I was Ling. Yeah. It was because Ling was from Malaysia that investigators thought that Scully had fled there. When he was finally linked to Daisy's destruction case, they focused all their efforts on the Philippines. <sighs> But soon you will see why they chose the Philippines. But first, we had to talk about Lux. Okay,、yeah. so Lux, he is a or he or she, I'm not sure, a dark web user. A He was the one who ran the largest hardcore website called Hurt to the Core.、Oh. He did not like that Daisy's destruction was so expensive for ten thousand dollars, <laughs> so he was pissed. He made it,、uh, you know, his goal to make it more accessible to the general public, which he did. So he paid for the video and uploaded all four parts of Daisy's destruction to Hurt to the Core. Now it's more public, and everyone can see it. Through his own website, wow! And this is how he, I guess, blew up, and because it went viral on the dark web, and some, some for some reason somehow, it found its way to the surface of the internet. Wow! The general public has now access to this in the European countries. Yeah, wow! Which I don't know about you, but that's a lot of audience for this type of video that nobody really wants to see. People are seeing this. Yeah, this is disgusting. Wow! And suddenly there was proof that Daisy's destruction was real and not just a legend. So、um, let's talk about the investigation. Actually,、mm. it, it was immediately、um, it caught the attention of Dutch investigators, and they, they worked trying to identify the adults and children in the videos.、Mm-hmm. To this day, the only people who have viewed Daisy's destruction are criminal pedophiles as well as investigators into the case. Right. Details were never released to the public because victims were kids. We know that there were three adults in in the video series.、Mm-hmm. There was one white male whose face was always pixelated clearly to hide his identity. Right. We also know that there are two younger females, maybe teenage teenagers,、um, probably older.、Mm-hmm. Um, they wore masks that cover the top half of their faces the whole time as well. They followed the man's instructions to torture and assault the two young girls and a baby. Oh my god! The young girls were eleven and twelve years old. The baby was eighteen months. Now,、mm. at this point, I want to give another warning because this next part gets very graphic. Yeah, very graphic. The baby was apparently hung by the legs and tortured like that. Alligator clips were used. Whips. Were used. A lighter, barbed wire, and various sex toys were also used. There was a large tank of water in which the girls were sur- submerged in.、Mm-hmm. They were beaten and raped, forced to perform sexual acts on each other and the baby. The girls were then forced to dig holes in which they were told their their own there would be their own graves. Whoa, that that would be scary for you to be told that. Yeah, that hole is gonna be for you. This is a child. It's a yeah. This is a eleven and a twelve year old, or maybe younger. But 
yeah they're 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 children and they're being told that they're going to die and they're gonna be or and they're digging their own grave like at that point that is that's pretty scary all of this is truly awful and for i just want to add this for him to um make the two teenagers that are covered in masks to do the torturing Mm -hmm. instead of getting his hands dirty is kind of like like disturbing like he's a coward yeah yeah like I, i i'm not promoting for you to do it but at the same time why would you let these you know female teenagers to do your own dirty work right so yeah that's that's not cool yeah sick um so dutch investigators knew that the video was but had been circulating around the world and they had a lot of trouble actually trying to figure out where the video was made Different departments and specialists were brought in to examine the footage. Usually there would be a lot of tension between different departments working together. And However, this case, everyone was united with a common goal of bringing this guy down. Mm-hmm. They couldn't trace the video, so they had to use good old-fashioned detective methods. They spent hours studying still images of the video and listening closely to voices for accents. The adults all spoke English, but the women had thick accents. They concluded that the man was from an English-speaking country, and the women were most likely Filipino. Paul Hopkins was from the Australian Federal Police Force, and he was one, the one to recognize the man's Australian accent. Mm. Right away, they began trying to connect this case to unsolved cases in Australia. They believe that he was hiding somewhere out in the Philippines, and so an, inv- an investigative team led by Agent Janet Francisco, went to work. Australian police force uh, found a case in which a real estate fraudster had fled uh, Australia before being convicted. After certain details, it seemed that this guy was the guy they were looking for. Mm -hmm. The man's name was Peter Scully. There you go. There we go. Finally, they're making a connection as to who this guy is because it's said that according to the police records yeah. the philippines is one of the top 10 producers of child pornography in the world which is saddening because i'm filipino he's filipino mm-hmm. and i i didn't know that honest honest to god i didn't know that i i mean you know i have an idea why it would be because of the fact that poor people just would do whatever there's a lot of survive right philippines yeah so yeah it's it it really makes me sad that it's it's coming from the philippines it's it's freaking crazy it's awful because traffickers target children from poor areas like we just said Mm -hmm. these children who were born into poverty are just desperate for food and shelter you know i'm talking about you know poor kids in the philippines it's just awful it's awful how many you know kids in the philippines that are you know going hungry on a daily basis yeah. with no roofs over their heads and you you know people really prey on those for their own like sick ideals and it's oh, yeah. it's crazy yeah. right parents sometimes willingly hand over their children to people who promise to give them a better life an opportunity to you know live lavish maybe or some something along those lines peter scully would be one of these predators offering a better life for these kids the family he has different aliases such as peter's peter adele and peter russell his primary audience lived in germany brazil the united kingdom and the united states however the market is worldwide wow. but It makes sense because people in the UK, US, Brazil, Germany, probably compared to like most of their viewers, has more money, Mm -hmm. right? So that's that 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 makes sense where the market would be in that kind of like general area. Yeah, yeah. So investigators scoured the Philippines, and after months, they were able to narrow the search. For Peter Scully to Cagayan de Oro, which is a highly urbanized city in northern Mindanao. In January 2015, something happened. An 18-year-old Carmian Alvarez, she came forward. She was taken by Peter at 14 years old, which was four years ago. 
for her at this time she was groomed by him to become his sex slave and his accomplice to wow. all his lewd things he treated her like his girlfriend and his daughter uh. which is yeah that, that's a nasty relationship yeah he helped him or she helped him run no limits fun or nlf wow she confessed her guilt and wanted to help the police basically to find peter scully finally be able to like charge him she explained how peter had asked him or asked her to bring him two young girls to bring back to her or to him she cannot come back to peter scully if she didn't bring any girls with him with her those two girls he asked for girls aged 9 and 11 specifically at first she asked if she could bring her sister but peter refused and said he didn't want you know anything to do with her family carmian ended up finding two cousins who were the right age nine and eleven specifically these girls have gone by multiple aliases to protect their identities as well the 12 year old has been called rosie and the nine year old has been called queenie wow and yeah rosie and queenie who are starving agreed to go with Carmian because she promised them food and shelter. So Carmian brought them to Peter, who fed them just like promised. Yeah. However, the night would take a far left turn for the worst. Peter and Carmian forced these girls to strip naked so that Carmian could bathe them as Peter took pictures. After that, the next morning, they were told to dig their own graves. Again, and given shovels, Peter then recorded them horrified reactions while they're digging their own grave. That afternoon, they were again forced to undress and perform sex acts on each other. Peter then began to rape both girls. Carmian had to cover one of the girls' face with the pillow because she was screaming too much. And this went on for a cycle of five days, and on the fifth day, they were found chained up and wearing dog collars. After this incident, Carmian suddenly felt guilty, and at this point, she decided to remove their chains and collars and let them go free. Rosie and Queenie did not run away and hide. They decided to go to the police in the Philippines and explained what exactly happened to them. Carmian was then arrested after the whole thing was explained to the authorities. At this point, investigators had been working tirelessly to match frame-by-frame frame images with floors and tiles and stairs of different locations in the Philippines. Um, they were able to identify 15 different locations at five different houses for Daisy's destruction. Mm. The three girls in the videos were identified and, of course, given uh, aliases to protect their identities. Um, they were able to locate 18-month-old Daisy. Incredibly, she was still alive and um, now she's back with her family she's still recovering however from what would have been lifelong medical problems from her torture that's for sure yeah um then they found 12 year old liza uh, who had been given to peter by her mother she was trying to raise her family with just two two dollars a day <sighs> peter promised her he would give liza a good education unfortunately like daisy she will likely have lifelong conditions yeah because of the trauma she endured sucks man yeah yeah sadly for 11 year old cindy a woman calling herself lovey had offered a better home for cindy she said this to cindy's auntie who had been taking care of cindy since her mother passed away mm -hmm. lovey was most likely carmian mm -hmm. it was reported that lovey had intentionally been keeping constant contact with cindy's auntie and then suddenly she stopped contacting her and changed her number wow yeah that's that's crazy you know like this auntie is probably worried like yeah definitely she just on. lost someone yeah that's that's insane dude like you can't do that it's awful unfortunately police were unable to find cindy alive after carmy Yen decided to help police she led them to the house where they retrieved cindy's body she had been raped and tortured then forced to dig her own grave <sighs> peter strangled her to death then buried her under the floorboards in the kitchen Carmi Ann claims that she wasn't there when Cindy was killed, but Peter had told her that it happened and where the body was. Man. Then, on February 20th, 2015, Peter Scully was finally located. 
He was in the city of Malai Balai. Police officers stormed his residence and finally arrested his ass. Oh, thank God. That's right. Oh, oh man. That was... Oh, my God. Wow. This is... This is crazy, man. No, honestly, it really is. Because, I mean, come on. This, that's a lot of... I mean, again, alias or stage name for the meantime or... Mm -hmm right now because we can't say their names yes but yeah yeah that's that's a lot of children oh man it's awful right. what happens to these kids and for Carmian to like help out it's unsettling like she was still a teen mind you that yeah she's not like you know a, a mom age at like 30 or something no she's just still a teen and well aware of what she's doing yeah and she she is doing it which is crazy man. but finally they arrested his ass and during his arrest cops would raid his residence they seized all of his electronics which included hardware memory cards and cameras they found the chains and dog collars that he had used on rosie and queenie investigators had to go through countless horrifying hours of footage found in his electronics this was in an effort to try and locate more victims because i mean there's not only you know these little girls that we mentioned a lot there's a lot of them there's a lot of them yeah. and i can only imagine what the investigator uh, the investigators are going through because it, it's it's their job this is a very tough job to do and f let alone watching children get molested and not on your own free will but because you have to to find this guy you know yeah. or to find more victims mm -hmm. right and it's just that's horrifying it's horrifying imagine. yeah even okay. even seasoned detectives with years of experience investigating child abuse and murders cried when investigating this the uh, this case the footages that they saw it was just too much the agents who worked on this case are still haunted to this day from the hours of torture that they had to watch. Once again, it's not just a couple of videos. They had to go through a lot of footage. Yeah. They believe there are anywhere between 8 to 75 more victims out there, either dead or alive. Wow. 75. Jeez. That, that's a lot. And they also believe that... Peter held some of them captive for years as a slave for him. After his arrest, however, it was not the end of NLF. No, it is not. It seemed that Peter had another accomplice, the second masked woman in Daisy's destruction. It turned out to be 19-year-old Lizelle Margallo. She's, uh, she was basically Peter Scully's other girlfriend. Like Harmon, she had also been taken and groomed by Scully when she was just a teenager. She had a huge responsibility running the business side of NLF. The money was probably going through her. Like, she was the one laundering everything. Wow. Despite being his sex slave, Carmian and Lizelle both said they felt safe with Peter and believed that he would never harm them. At the time, Peter, uh, at the time of Peter's arrest, Lizelle was living in a luxury condo in Cebu. She already had 16, 16 outstanding warrants against her. Not one, not two, but 16. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of Jeez. warrants. She went by the alias Shannon Carpio. She had a group of friends. She met at a fancy gym. People who knew her said that she spoke English very well and seemed very well educated and confident about herself and the way she's living it's just you know this aura just you know this is me right yeah. she had a passport with the first name gina carpio or with the name gina carpio and she told the police or people shannon was just her stage uh, stage name wow. so yeah she she's going by a lot of names she led a very glamorous lifestyle on social media showing off she went to church regularly and did charity work she donated to causes like child hunger and homelessness. She claimed she was the wife of a French software millionaire 
She would be able to take her friends to, out to expen expensive dinners and drinks. And she said the money came from her husband. I don't know what kind of expensive dinners. I would think like, you know, thousand dollar dinner type thing. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know about you, but teenagers do not afford that in the Philippines. They'd either be in school or working regular job. Yeah, it's 19 in, at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe she could have been one of the lucky ones. But either way, it's not, it's mm -hmm. not just like that. After her arrest, her friends were shocked because none of them were sus ever su suspected of her being a, you know, pedophile abuser. So, you know, she was really able to, you know, hide her personality oh, yeah. really good. She presented, like, a really good image of, of herself to yeah. so the, the people around her. Yeah. And if you guys are wondering where the money came from, you guys guessed it. It came from Peter Scully because she was an accomplice. He was actually talking to her from his jail, from his jail cell through what, uh, WhatsApp on his cell phone. She had been continuing the production of NLF, not No Limits Fun, and posting videos regularly. The NBI in the Philippines labeled her as a savage and highly dangerous suspect. In January 25th, 2017, they were finally able to track her down and arrest her. She was on a vacation on Malapascua Island and the NBI agents surrounded her as she was walking down the shoreline. She confirmed with um, authorities that Peter was still running his business from jail somehow. You know, I'm not saying that it was through her, but somehow she, he was still doing it. Peter Scully had at least one other female accomplice, Dorothea Chiichia. She was arrested just a month later after Lizelle. Three other men were also arrested and charged for having been involved with No Limits Fun. It's, it's not only Peter Scully and his girlfriend. It's a bunch more people. So we don't wow. even know if it's just this group of people, but... Yeah. He had a whole team. Yeah, he had a whole team. So these these three men are a Filipino man named Alexander Lau. Not a Filipino. That's probably mixed. I don't know. Just saying. <laughs> and a Brazilian doctor named Daniel Cayetano de Oliveira. And a German man named Christian Rusch or Rusche. Other suspects have been identified but still at large. So, like I said, it's not just them. Yeah, these are only the ones that we know of, but we don't know how many of them are still out there. There's more, yeah, for sure. There's for sure a lot more. So, Peter's official indictment was postponed three times because he couldn't find an attorney. When he finally met with an attorney, this attorney's name is Alejandro Jose Palugna. And Peter claimed to be molested by a priest when he was 13 years old. I. That doesn't make what you did right. It doesn't definitely. I don't not. know. I don't know what that has to do with what you did. No, honestly, he said that he was the only. He was only a passive participant in the business, and that Carmi Ann had really been running the show this whole time. Yeah, by saying this, he hoped to become a witness by turning against her. And he wanted some so sort of like plea bargain. In result, he pleaded not guilty during his trial and his victims had to relieve, relive their traumas and recount their experiences for the court in order to testify against him. Peter would laugh and joke about his crimes. On June 13, 2018, Scully and Carmian were both found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. Yes, finally. Finally. And yeah, as a jail inmate, Peter had a list of demands. The gut on this guy, it's crazy. Right. The audacity. What the heck? He wanted access to a cell phone. No. He wanted fresh meat for dinner. No. He wanted specific meals like corned beef and eggs. Wow. No. <laughs> he demanded a fan for his cell because it was too hot. Supposedly, all these requests have been denied. Hopefully. Thank God they got denied. Yeah. A family member of contacted uh, of his contacted the jail, a Karen of some sort, demanded he be given special treatment. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, are you serious? This guy deserves to suffer. Yeah. What he, the heck? No, you can't just... No. Well, while he was in jail, he was actually interviewed for 60 Minutes Australia. He claimed that he never harmed any children and left he, uh, until he left Australia. He said it was his goal to find out w what made him this way and he was going to write a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Okay, Peter. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Go write your book, man. Bruh. <laughs> Talk to a psychiatrist, bro. Because... Come in, oh, come on, dude! You you're like experimenting on children, and then you're gonna write what you experimented on throughout the years that you did. It's sick. It's, it's not it's some, sick. It's not some game. <laughs> That's crazy. His, th these demands are crazy. So he then denied any answers to the interview questions, claiming that it would all be in a book. Scully was never convicted of the murder of 11-year-old Cindy, unfortunately, because there's, I don't think there's enough proof that he killed her. Mm -hmm. Although, he's actually still under investigation for even more crimes, thank God. Yeah. I mean, although he has life in prison already along with Carmi Ann, I'm glad he's still getting a lot of you know, he still has a lot of cases he has to fight against. He's gonna get like three life sentences. Yeah, 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 I hope so. Okay. Fingers crossed. Or Fingers crossed. I don't know. No possibility yeah. of parole. Yeah. No. 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 None of that. Some, for sure. Yeah. Small trivia for you guys. After all that, in 2016, the dark web user Lux was also identified. He was also an Australian named Matthew David Graham. He was a 22-year-old nanotech student who lived with his parents in Melbourne, Australia. Surprisingly, the same place where Peter Scully was born. That's crazy, right? He, he was the one who ran hurt to the core from his bedroom. He was sentenced to 15 years in jail. From his bedroom? Yeah, from his bedroom. Wow. It's not like he's in an office with all these gadgets. No. And he only got Better. 15 years? 15 years, unfortunately. What the heck? But, I mean, I don't think he's the one who did the torturing of kids and whatnot. I'm not justifying him. He still ran a whole, you know, child pornography website called Heart to the Core. Well, anyways, Jen. Yeah. What do you think about Peter Scully? Do you think he got what he deserved? No, 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 no. I think, I think Peter Scully should be dead. Honestly, like death sentence by gas chamber. <laughs> you know, I I'm, I usually oppose the death sentence, but in this case, I think there's like no redemption for this guy. You no, know, no. Like, there's no way he can come back from this. Death by torture. <laughs> for for all the seventy five victims or more that you did, <laughs> maybe castration. I think I think all the victims <laughs> should gather around you and like I don't know pick a nail or something yeah <laughs> like yeah yeah something horrible because you're the worst worst the worst i i can't i can't imagine yeah wow but what about carmian though do we let her off the hook does did she get what you know she deserved for being an accomplice to all his crimes or well she did run the business and also and, and also, she she helped Peter like commit a lot of these acts. Yeah. So so what are we thinking? Like a possibility of parole? Poss okay. Yeah, I, I think that she deserves at least a possibility of parole, but she definitely deserves why? life. Why? This, why is it? Why is there a possibility of parole? Okay. May, maybe she she redeemed herself by helping the police and helping the children escape because because of her, those children are alive to this day. Right. Okay. Okay. I, okay, I, I kind of agree with that. I kind of agree with that. But, yeah. I, I mean, to be fair, she was the one who ran, like, the whole business. Uh, along, I mean, it, it is along with other people, but she was, you know, in there, right? So, I mean, I think she could just stay in there, honestly, because it'll do more harm for everyone if she's out. Yeah, yeah honestly. Gosh. So... 
Do you think Peter could ever be reintegrated into society? Ah, man, <laughs> he gotta go. Yo, no, honestly, he, he has to go. Because it's not just those little children. It's also the parents. Family members. And he's, A lot of people who did not want to see that video saw it. Yeah. And... If it wasn't for him, there would there wouldn't be any video. That being said, what about everyone else? What do you guys think of Peter Scully or Carmian? Because I mean, I think these two people are like horrible to like their bones, you know. And yeah, let us down. Uh, let us know down in the comments below because we'd we'd really like to know of what you think of these two. Yep. Or if you've heard this story before, what what did you think when you first? you know saw these um or read these uh s fucking story it's talking crazy, yeah crazy talking about story. children being molested yeah. it's it's insane it's oh my god it's too much it's a lot to take in honestly especially when it happened in the philippines or yeah yeah filipino women and children are involved and which sucks yeah being preyed upon is it's awful it's awful so, that is the terrible case of Peter Scully, mastermind behind No Limits Fund, which produced a $10,000 hardcore video that went viral. We hope we were able to shine some light for you guys today. And if you guys enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to head on over to Spotify. That's right, because Spotify is now the world's number one podcasting platform. But yes, head on over to Spotify, link down in the description below, and press the follow button. It only takes a few minutes, but it really goes a long way to helping us out. Yes, so please do that for us. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. And for you guys that are wondering when the next tattoo giveaway is... Yes, yes. We will need your help. We would love to reach our goal of... 500 subscribers mm -hmm. and we'll be doing our next tattoo giveaway once we reach that goal that's right and if you guys didn't see the last one we finished it or i finished it and it is now posted on night parade studio instagram at night parade studio yep. just make sure you guys share this video and click this subscribe button for you guys to enter the next tattoo giveaway because those first 500 are the ones who's going to get the free five to six hour session from all around the world. If you guys are willing to travel to the Bay Area to get a tattoo piece for me for five to six hours, anything that you want, it could be a bunch of little pieces or, or one big piece that we could finish in five to six hours. Yeah. Feel free to, you know, travel, maybe do a vacation over here. We, I don't know, you know, do something, do something, man. It's it's, it's fun out here. Heck yeah. So yeah, I'll share the video so that everyone can join, all your friends. Also, go ahead and hit that like button. It'll help us out a lot. Again, comment, leave one, please. We'd like to hear what you guys think of this video. Yeah. <clears throat> With that being said, once again. We welcome you guys to the Night Parade. My name is Jan. And my name is Glenn. That's right. Welcome to the Night Parade.